real. Oh, you're trying to gaslight us, huh? Now, huh? That's crazy talk. Reborn in the land of grievances, which is such an edgy name. An opportunity for rebirth. Go to the dormitories in the Fortress of Meripede. You and Paimon arrive at the for dormitories of the Fortress of Meripede. Thanks for the introduction, buddy. Fortress of Meripede would be super scary, but looking back on it, it really wasn't that bad at all. You've got a set schedule, guaranteed food and board, and you can even buy all kinds of stuff with credit coupons. It's really no surprise that many people don't even want to leave. Um... They probably have that guy to thank for that. Like, we're not even mentioning Ryo's name. Oh, you mean Risley? He's definitely a pretty impressive leader. While he does look kind of intimidating, he's actually pretty easy to talk to once you've had a conversation or two with him. Paimon wonders how he's like with the people here. Do they also get the same guy we do? Or is he a lot harsher with the bad guys? I love the implication that... Paimon and Traveler are gaslighting themselves that like, oh, we're not the bad guys. Like, it's kind of weird that there's a separation between like, oh, Traveler and I are always the good guys and everyone else in the, the prison, they're all bad guys. Like, if maybe some people were sent here undercover or like they were wronged for no reason, just because you're in prison doesn't mean that like you're automatically the bad guy, you know? Ish. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. We're peak morals? Yeah, we're definitely peak morals after the whole Hanaya event. Yeah, you must be doing something right to maintain order here, while not making everything feel super oppressive. You know, um, you will have order or something like that? I excuse me, did I hear someone there? Could you please do me a favor? Bro, who's talking in the walls? Huh? could have sworn she just heard something. He's in the walls. He's in the goddamn walls. Excuse me, is someone passing by? Could you do me a favor, please? Nope, Paimon wasn't dreaming. There's someone over there for sure. But Paimon doesn't see anyone. Bro's in the box. Oh, did you hear my call? Uh, thank you so much. I'm over here, inside this big box. Why are you in the box? <laughs> uh, you're inside the box? Oh, no wonder Paimon didn't see anything. Well, come on, Traveler, let's go take a look. Um, why are you hiding in here anyway? If we hadn't happened to pass by, you could have been stuck for days. We could have found a skeleton instead. Uh, it's a bit complicated. Uh, can we not talk about that for now? <laughs> what? Did someone shave your eyebrows? Or did someone strip you of your clothes? First of all, Genshin would never show this. Second of all, who's coming over? Why would you hide if someone shaved your eyebrows? Whoa, that's terrible. Did someone seriously do that to you? No, no, it was nothing quite that serious. I'd just like some help finding my hat. So why are you in a box? Also, why do we now know your name? F Fasoli? Fasol. Fasoli. Everyone who's French in this chat, I'm so sorry. Just your hat? But then why can't you look for it yourself? Bro's a liar, that's why. Huh. <gasps> Wait, Paimon gets it! Something must have happened to your hair! Paimon, we don't have to ask. There's no need to spell it out. <laughs> sorry, sorry! So that's what happened. Paimon gets it now. <laughs> no wonder why you had to hide inside the box. Don't need to roast him like that. You just need your hat, right? We'll get it back to you right away! What kind of hat was it? I think you may have misunderstood me, but... Uh, never mind. Please, just help me find my hat. It's a soft and brown hat with a bit of a brim. Nothing fancy. I think I probably lost it near the entrance elevator. It was getting a bit hot, so I took it off and had a quick nap. But oh, when I came to, it was gone. It's really important to me, so your help would mean the world. I'll wait here for your return. Don't worry, we'll be back. Reborn in the land of grievances. 
Hey, buddy. Knock, knock. I'm really sorry to bother you like this. Please, uh, come back soon. What if I keep knocking on the chest? I'm Damn. I thought it would give me different dialogue. I guess not. Paimon doesn't see anything here. But let's go somewhere else. Do you think someone stole it? <sighs> Just where is that thing? Oh, this is taking longer than Paimon thought. Nothing in the water either. Hmm. Paimon thought it might have gotten blown in. Oh, we've looked everywhere and still not seen anything that looks like a hat. Eh, let's turn back. We can't scour the entire fortress. Huh, that's a good idea. If he's just looking to cover his head, then it shouldn't matter what kind of hat he's wearing. Why don't we check out the rag and bone shop? If memory serves, they've got all kinds of stuff in there. You sure get fired up quick when it comes to shopping. I'm only paying for the hat, though. <laughs> You'll let Paimon pick out some other stuff, too, right? If we're going to the shop anyway. Well, either way, let's go check it out first. Uh, Paimon doesn't remember you being the boss. Well, <laughs> I'm just standing in for Mr. Alvar while he's off restocking the shop. That, I, I did not know what accent he was going with, all right. Now, just wait a sec. A blonde foreigner, dressed all in white, accompanied by a glaze-covered flying chunk of gingerbread. Oh, you must be the legendary Gingerbread? Traveler and their companion, Paimon. I... The gingerbread part is sending me. I love his voice. He's giving me bougie. He's giving me... Um... I don't know. I, it's, it's an interesting voice. I'm not gonna lie. I was a little confused in the beginning. No! No! I, well, you're half... Right. Paimon's the traveler's treasured companion, sure, but she's not some flying chunk of gingerbread! Sorry, sorry, I just... Oh, I never thought I'd get the chance to see you with my own eyes, so... Got a bit ahead of myself. I hope you find it in your magnanimous heart to forgive my discourtesy. I'm just a nobody, after all. It's giving... The chimney sweepers in, um... In Mary Poppins. That's what it is. <sighs> There's no need to put yourself down like that. Paimon's just denting. Why, your heroic actions at Araneus have long made their way to the fortress of Meripede. We heard that you were personally received by his grace when you made your way down here, you know. Ah, you were the envy of all. What, because... We... You know, we're, we're bros with Rio, like... And you're one of his grace's favorite people, so of course, everyone wants to be introduced to you. I'm one of his favorites? Oh, Risley, you shouldn't have. And, ah, so it's because of him. And here I thought I was made as a hero. <laughs> well, I'd figure you'd appreciate honesty over flattery. I do, actually. After all, I also only joined up here because I'd heard Mr. Alvar was a good friend of the Duke. So everyone wants to meet the Duke, huh? And though I've only caught scant sight of his grace since then, as fate would have it, I've become fast friends with Mr. Alvar himself. Interesting. Okay, so you're only friends with people if they have, um, positions of power. That's very interesting that you would say that, but I appreciate your honesty for that, you know? I'm one of Rio's favorites. Oh my god, stop! I'm blushing! <laughs> no, literally, I'm just like, oh my god, I'm his favorite? That's kind of crazy. Everyone wants a piece of the cake. Listen, I'm sure he has enough to share, you know? I mean, we've all got agendas, but rather than trying to force something to be true, it's often better to just go with the flow. Kind of like this guy. He's pretty honest with his stuff, you know? Oh, so now you're trying to kiss up to us. Oh, okay, Paimon. Shh, shh, shh. Well, I did mean it when I called you legends, and it is indeed an honor to meet the two of you. Oh, enough of that. Is there something you're looking for? I'm looking for a man's hat. You seen one? No problem. Anything else? Oh, am I actually shopping? Hey, feel free to check out anything you want. The credit coupon costs are on me. Hey, you gonna spend money for me? You're a real one, buddy. Wait, but that's... Uh... You don't have to be so nice. Well, it's not like I'm getting paid to watch this shop. 
Instead of Moro coupons, Mr. Alvar usually lets me just take my pick of our goods. Oh, that's actually really sweet. Life's been pretty good recently, so I might as well just wave your bill. Never hurts to make some friends. I like you, buddy. That's how you do business. If you put it that way, don't ask me why I suddenly became a, uh, like a New York um, mafia sounding member. That, that's by accident. All right, Paimon will take a look. After a moment's hesitation, Paimon manages to pick out two snacks. Are you sure you don't want more? These opportunities don't come by every day, you know. It's all right, two will do. I never thought you'd turn down a chance to freeload. Uh, it just doesn't feel the same if the owner's offering everything to you for free. But anyway, we don't need to get into that right now. We can discuss Pymonology later. That poor guy must still be waiting for us. Thank you so much. We'll be off then. Bye, dude. Thanks for your business. I'll remember this. No problem, and thank you for your patronage. I'd appreciate it if you could put in a nice word for our establishment the next time you speak to his grace. That's a real sneaky way of getting good reviews. But people He's do it. Been on a while. Hyman hopes that guy in the box hasn't passed out from lack of air. He, he could open the box whenever he wants, right? You can come out now! We found your hat! You did? Oh, Archons, you just saved my life! Just one sec! Hmm. Uh. Wait, so you're not actually bald? You've got such a full head of hair, too! But why, why was it, what, what? changed without with and without the hat was this just a sneaky way of like oh um like i can't have the hat not on my head like i couldn't change models something like that i don't know i mean i told you that there had been a misunderstanding this has nothing to do with my hair what? wait uh, uh, this isn't my hat well we got you a new one we tried really hard to look for your hat, but no dice. To be precise, someone else gave it to us. Ah, oh, I see. Thank you so much. I'm really grateful, but unfortunately, there's just something special about my hat. Wait, like, does it keep you alive or something? Like, what? what's going on? Does it have some kind of sentimental value? But, um, sorry, I can't... Uh, Explain at the moment. Time's tight as well, so I suppose I'll keep looking for a while. If you're looking for a hat, I just picked one up over here. Is it yours? Ah, uh, hi, Deus Ex Machina Riz Boy. How's it going? Your Grace! Oh, hey, Risley! It's been a while! Well, it's a slow day today, so I decided to go for a little stroll. Even if your workspace isn't cramped, it's still good to get some air. What fresh air do you have in this goddamn place, my guy? I'll say I'm not at all surprised to find the two of you here. You never could turn down someone's request for help. <laughs> it's what good adventurers do, after all. Is that so? Maybe I should consider asking the Adventurers Guild to open a branch here. In the prison? Y'all wow for that. As I recall, these hats are very important to members of the Beret Society. The Beret Society? Just to avoid misplacing it again, hmm? You might not have the same luck next time. Uh, understood. <laughs> Thank you so much, Your Grace. Then, uh, then I'll be off. Um, bye. I'll get going now. Bye, it's okay. We're with Rio now, so you're good. What a strange guy. Why did he care so much about his hat? I mean, he did... Rio did say he was part of the Beret Society or something, so maybe that's why. Oh, and has he done something wrong? When he saw you, it was as if he'd seen a ghost. Oh, not at all. In fact, members of the Beret Society are model prisoners. They work hard and never get into trouble. They save me a lot of work, in fact. Aw. As for him, I guess he's just more of an introvert. It's not unusual for the more shy prisoners to freak out when I show up unannounced. Oh. Huh? Shy? There are prisoners who are afraid to talk to people? Wow, imagine being an introvert, Paimon. That's kind of crazy. Prisoners are still people, after all. Yeah. There are as many crimes and motives as there are stars in the sky. 
The idea of the criminal as a selfish, heartless brute is just a stereotype. Exactly. Such labels could never capture the complexity of even a single individual person. What kind of a person a prisoner may be and, and why they've committed a crime? We'd never know these things if they don't share their story with us. Exactly. Look at the prisoners, like, what do they get, uh, what do they get in prison? I mean, here's the thing, I do know that, like, in real life, right, some people would rather go to prison because it's more expensive to live, um, in general. So, at least in prison you get, like, shelter. Even though in, like, IRL life it's very, like, a lot of the, the, the prisoner living conditions are really, really bad. Um, but it is a reason, you know? If the prison system wasn't so f in the US, I would consider it. Yeah. But some people don't even have the choice. Some people would rather take, like, their their living situation is so bad that it's just like, you would take the prison system over, you know, just chilling outside because it's so expensive. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, um, like, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to glorify the prison system because Industrialized prison system is something and there is a lot of mistreatment especially to black people and like people of color specifically within the prison system there is school to prison pipeline system that has been discussed as well it's not a good system and people abuse their power within that system all that time but there are some situations where some people would actually choose the f system that they have to play in versus you know trying to survive outside of that system. The homeless will purposely get locked up in cold climates during winter to survive, not major crimes, just something to get them out of the elements until spring. I've seen this happen. Yeah, as, like, I know that happens in New York specifically. I also do know there were, like, cases in Japan where um, people were saying that it, they like, especially in, like, major cities, um, elderly people have started committing more crimes just so that they have a place to stay and like shelter and food because living prices and like prices in general in Japan are so high, especially in major cities. So I know that's happening. So it's kind of just like some people really, it's not really choose, but it's kind of just like they have their hands forced and decide to um, be sent to jail rather than um, trying to survive outside because it's just, it, it's sometimes even more difficult to survive um, outside the prison system. It happens when the climate is really inhospitable during certain seasons. So while it does happen, I still think you might see a lot less of that in SoCal where the lowest of that the temperature drops in the winter is 50 degrees Fahrenheit, meaning uh, it's absolutely possible to survive it outside of night. I mean, wouldn't, wouldn't people want to escape the heat though as well? Homelessness is, uh, is kind of dealt with here okay, better than a lot of countries at least. It's not dealt at with very well in the U.S. In the U.S., it's kind of just like, oh, you're homeless because, like, you deal with drugs or, like, you spend it all on gambling or something like that, which is not always necessarily the case. There are a ton of people who just don't have the funds to afford places and especially in like major cities where like rent is expensive and so are so is food and like basic survival necessities. Um, some people would rather just take the the option of having a roof over their heads and being fed at least one meal a day um, and like dealing with that in within the prison system, which is already f***ed up instead of, you know, having to try and survive in like a major city with very expensive things. It's something to think about. Huh. You've got a point. Anyway, it's all good as long as it makes sense to you. What is the Boe Society? And there are people who enjoy working. Mm -hmm. Not that there are people who enjoy working. Shut up. Me. Me me at you, Aether. Shut up. I will fight you. Anyway, what's the Boe Society? Although most of the societies here will just turn individual brawls into mass ones, the Boe Society does appear to be an exception, and it's instead trying to experiment with some novel and interesting things. If you have some time, why don't we grab something at the coupon cafeteria? It'll give us time to catch up, too. Are we getting dinner together? I'm down with that. And if you're still interested in the berets after that, I can take you to their usual gathering place as well. Paimon's not the biggest fan of that cafeteria, but if we're gonna catch up... Let's go, then. All right, then. Please follow me. Dinner with Daddy Rio? That's kind of what this is. 
welcome, Your Grace, and the Traveler. Would you like three orders of today's welfare meal? Ooh, okay. Unfortunately, we weren't informed of your visit in advance, so we didn't prepare any super deluxe welfare meals today. I'll pass on the food, then. What about you? Oh my god, super deluxe or bus, bro? Then Paimon will also pass. Paimon will save her stomach for something better. Hmm, what a pity. It would seem that none of us can properly appreciate your skills, Walsey. Wow, well, that sounded so... That sounded like slander, but like unintentionally. <laughs> then I must beg your grace to find me some more ingredients so I can come up with some more welfare meal recipes. If you're not in the mood to eat, I can get you some drinks. We just got some great shipments in from above. Yes, please? Huh. Paimon didn't know you could get non-welfare stuff at this place. <laughs> it's not for everyone. Think of it as a special treat for VIPs. Oh my god, we're special. Oh, now that's what Paimon likes to hear. In that case, two bottles of the drink for Paimon, please. Two bottles coming right up. After a while, Wosley brings up the drinks for everyone. Our first meeting Fanta? took place on short notice, and we were both swamped by everything that happened after, so there was no time for more casual chit-chat. You know, swamped as in actually swamped with water, but you know. Also, I love that they actually put two bottles for, for Paimon. Where is Paimon going to store all that her inner tummy? That's an actual question. I'm actually quite fond of stories, you know. Of course, the others have already told me a lot about your deeds in Fontaine, but... I'd love to hear it straight from the source. Oh, that'd be quite the long story. I'd love to have story time with Rio. I fought tooth and nail for the sake of justice. I'm still trying to learn more about Fontaine. To be honest, I really wasn't that involved with a lot of it. I mean, I was involved, but this I'm still sanctuary. trying to learn more. Uh, I'm still trying to learn more about Fontaine. I see. Certainly that'd fit your title as the traveler. Seeing everything for yourself, recording everything to the best of your ability, and making lots of friends along the way. I'm sure that by the end of your journey, you'll possess an unmatched amount of perspectives and opportunities. Uh, Paimon gets the sense that you're trying to flatter us. That guy we talked to earlier was obviously trying to get us to put in a good word for him, but you're the Duke, right? Why would you need to get on our good side? Well, after all, you did help the Fortress and I maintain our autonomy. Is it so strange that I would want to give a few words of praise out of genuine admiration? Aw, Rio, that's actually really sweet. Um, it, it's just weird because you don't ever talk about yourself, you know. I want to know more about you. That's all. <laughs> so this is a matter of trust. Which is unfortunate, since I don't have nearly as interesting of a story to offer about myself. Really? I want to know, though. I was convicted and sent here at an early age. I only became the top dog after spending a long time figuring out its inner workings. Oh, so you were the spy on the inside, you know? If I took a shot for every time I was down bad for this man, I would have alcohol poisoning. I'm screaming. Anyway, close in on uh, on Rio. There you go. I want to close in on his lap again. My God, don't let the voice actor see any of this. Power and control come in many forms. Some fair and ethical, others less so. And since we're all sinners here, the victor calls the shots, no matter how they manage to get to the top. I don't like this shot of him staring at me because now I am very nervous. So, what do you think? Didn't put you much more at ease, now did it? I... Uh, kinda. You're really different from most of the people we've met so far. <laughs> I'm perfectly aware of that too, but even so, that doesn't make me think any less of you. I would very much like to maintain friendly relations with you two. Hmm. I must thank you for your generosity, but I'm not going to turn down Rio. He's been chill with us so far. Also, he's a vibe, you know? That's how I feel as well, buddy. Oh. Your Grace, after following your instructions, we were able to find a box of undeclared contraband in the latest shipment of cargo. Oh. Damn. They were extremely well hidden, and we've confirmed that the senders have been using this method to smuggle goods for a while. We're trying to trace the goods to their source. Got it. Leave the box here and contact me immediately if you make any progress. You're dismissed. What contraband are we talking about? Yes, Your Grace. Sorry, I had almost completely forgotten about this. She mentioned something about contraband. 
Are they, like, dangerous goods? Not necessarily. The term is just applied to things people want to bring in on the sly. Many people here are experts at pulling rabbits out of the most ordinary hats. So we have to examine everything carefully. You're talking about Lene, aren't you? Now, what do we have here? Hmm, it's more or less what I expected. Whoa, this is certainly a box of curiosities! Mora, snacks, yarn, balls, ropes, mechanical parts, and even a gem! Wait, if you've confiscated this entire box, then does that mean all of this belongs to you now? Yep. We can't just send them back up now, can we? Paimon wants the gem, at least. What? But that's just insane profit! Traveler, why don't you become a duke as well? Huh? You're wild for that. What about you, Paimon? Paimon will be your vault keeper! Not the vault keeper. You can protect sh Jokes aside, I didn't know you'd be so interested in this box. How about this, then? You can pick anything you want from it. Consider it a gift from me. Huh? What do you mean you can pick anything you want from it? Unless I'm becoming a duke via marriage, I ain't interested. That's crazy talk, but you're kind of right, though. Really? You'll let Paimon pick anything? She's going to pick the gem. No take backs. Paimon will have you know that she's got a real good eye for treasure. I love that they're just intensely staring at each other like a one-on-one. -on -one. I never joke about things like this. This is, this is fighting talk, actually. Not the can I have you instead. All right, Paimon's gonna have a look. Uh, Paimon wants this one. This dark, sparkly gem. You just know it must be worth a ton of Mora. Watch it be counterfeit. It'd be real funny uh, if it was counter... Oh! Uh, Paimon? Actually, never mind. Paimon doesn't want this gem anymore. Can Paimon pick something else instead? Paimon? Are you okay? What's wrong? Are you feeling unwell? There's something... weird about this gem. Paimon remembered a lot of bad things when she picked it up. Did you remember that you were the unknown god? Like... What do you mean? Tell us! Paimon couldn't even tune them out. It's as if the gem was just drawing them out of Paimon's brain. It was super spooky. Is that so? Let me give it a try. Uh-oh. That sounds like a bad idea. <laughs> Uh-oh. That was a nervous laugh. <laughs> I'm scared now. Paimon's right. I, too, experienced some unpleasant flashbacks. Uh-oh. Um... Not the huh, let me try. Bro, we would all die in a horror movie. If, think, if this thing would kill us, all of us would just be like, oh, let me try. Die. Bro, this is a terrible idea. Are you sure? I wouldn't exactly call it fun. Um, I want to make sure I know exactly what you saw. My constitution's a bit different than everyone else's. To be fair, we do have main character energy, you know? Only if we can see into her head, right? I would love to know what both of them saw. Fair enough. Go ahead. I don't think it'll have a permanent effect. How would you know? You just found it and you just touched it. Oh my god. It's all the carry bear, like all the all the Dane quests that we saw. That's weird. That's weird that they would only show the Dane's lift quests. Are you okay, Traveler? You also saw something, right? I relived some rather unforgettable memories. Specifically, only the ones with Dane. I'll take this gem, then, and run a thorough investigation on its properties. Uh, Paimon, feel free to pick something else. Then... Actually, never mind. Paimon's gonna pass. Paimon was thinking about one of the snacks, but who knows if it'll also make Paimon sick. An astute decision. You do have a point. In that case, we should destroy the entire box and all of its contents. Seems like we're almost done with our drinks, too. Let's go check out the Society's Gathering Place, then. I can introduce you, and we can also continue our conversation while we're at it. Wait, are you this free every day or something? Bro, did Paimo just like, you got nothing to do in your job? Like, that's rude. Just noticed? I wasn't exactly busy the first time we met, either. Not the just notice? That's crazy!
We are honored by your visit, Your Grace. All of us at the Society have been waiting for your arrival. This is... Why does he have a Georgian accent? Are these your two guests? Yes. Hi. Mm-hmm. Let me introduce you to them. Traveler, this is Dugier, the head of the Beret Society. This is their gathering place. Members can find all sorts of drinks and snacks here, as well as a large variety of books and other resources. Hmm, why do I feel that? Because we were introduced to Contraband, and also the Beret Society at the same quest, why do I feel like they're going to be connected in some way? Like maybe the, the Contraband was through the Beret Society? Hmm, especially because Rio said, oh, they never cause any trouble. Maybe you just didn't find the trouble yet. Every once in a while, the society will also host activities and seminars, which are always well attended. You flatter me, your grace. All we did was set up an organization in the same way as you would in the world above. It's so easy to feel lonely and helpless when you arrive here for the first time. I remember that feeling all too well. None of us knew anything about this place then, after all. <laughs> but that's when the thought came to me. If we could help everyone turn over a new leaf, they would no longer have to lead such gloomy existences. Thus, it was with your help that I founded the Beret Society. Okay. Oh, so you were also involved with this, Risley? Ah, my part in this was minimal. All I did was follow procedure and rubber stamp the application. I'm sure you have a very good sense of what this place is about by now. As you know, not everyone takes their sentence seriously. For some, this is just another place where they can eat, breathe, and sleep. But the society is a great place for those who wish to turn things around. Exactly right. Here, we keep an eye on each other and remind each other of our goals. Everyone can focus on rehabilitating our mental states and even make many new friends. Our operations are entirely funded by members donated goods and Witness the parts. stars shatter Same before you. Things you can see here. Who knew you could find such a place in the fortress of Meripede? Oh, right, and what's the deal with the hats? Ah, oh, there's nothing deep about it. I just felt like we needed some kind of visible identifier. If our members felt joy and pride from being a part of this group, then the hats would become a point of pride for them as well. And when we're together, we will feel a sense of community from seeing everyone's hats. Optimism, community, hard work, and a desire for a new life. I hope this hat will show everyone everything we have been working towards. In other words, that hat has come to represent something like a model citizen, which also helps them recruit new members. Once again, you are exactly right, Your Grace. That's a part of our goal as well. Let's take a little old seat over here. There's no need for us to stand. This VA is good. I really like his voice, honestly. I'll ask the members to get us some drinks. Please wait here just one moment. You know, feel free to look around, too, if you want to learn more about us. So this meeting was planned all along? Oh, right. What happened to your slow mm -hmm. day, Risley? Huh. Seems like I shouldn't underestimate an adventurer's keen sense of observation. I'll bear that in mind the next time I need to do something low-key. Hmm. Trying to keep things secret from us, Rio? Like your relationship with New Volet or something like that? Uh, kidding, of course. We're just discussing some small matters. It shouldn't take long. Mm-hmm. We've also already gone over the organization's vision. Instead of listening to me try to explain some more, maybe it'd be better if you took a look around for yourself. He didn't answer the question at all. Uh, well, we're already here, aren't we? Yeah, might as well take a look. Yeah, they're supposed to be like the model prisoners, right? So this is what their spot looks like. Let's talk to these members. There's a good variety of books here, but it also looks like the selection's regularly updated. If nothing else, one can definitely find something here and wish to pass the time. A member's diary is also displayed amongst the books. It was probably included for recruitment purposes. What are you doing over here? Oh, hello. You are a guest of the Duke, are you not? I'm organizing the bookshelves. Want to take a look? We've got some classics, as well as a few books that the members published themselves. 
Are there writers in the society? Yeah. Most of them are writing diaries or autobiographies on their time in the organization. Some quit drinking. Uh, some learned to tailor. Uh, some became real good at calligraphy. And even I've learned to use a camera. <laughs> we find it kind of funny. You see, had we managed to stay above ground, none of us would have ever had the time to learn any of those skills. Ah, it's because you all have a lot more free time now. That's one thing to say from in prison, but okay. Not only that, but we've also now got the mental space to think about taking on new things. Before we came here, we were constantly exhausted just trying to live. With how the Duke and Mr. Dugier have organized our lives down here, though, <laughs> all we need to do is think about the things that we want to do. You never know what you may be good at until you give it a try. That is true. That is advice that chat should go by, honestly. And while you're here, no matter what you do, you won't get judged for it. After all, there's no need to conform to societal expectations when you're already in jail. So this is something like a safe space. Yeah, that's exactly right. After all, not everyone is good at fighting or have the physical strength to do hard labor. The society is exactly what some of us need. And that's it. I just finished organizing this shelf as well, so feel free to check it out if you want. Just remember to put the books back after you're done. Don't worry, we will. This is like if Lisa went to jail. <laughs> uh, Ocelet. Ocelet? Ocelot. Welcome to our gathering place. Is there anything you'd like me to explain to you? Just a lot of everything, honestly. Oh, it's okay. We're just taking a look around. You sound a bit like a melusine guide? That's kind of crazy to say. You sound a bit like a melusine guide. Uh, well, that's not a bad comparison. It is my job to explain our amenities and benefits to our latest members. I'm sure Mr. Dugier has already explained some of it, but allow me to fill you in some more. Besides this space, which our members use to rest and relax, we also have an entertainment room, a fitness room, and a self-study room. That's really nice that they have, like, self-improvement rooms, TVH. These rooms are open to all of our members. We want everyone to be able to use their free time to the fullest. Wow, that's pretty cool. Do you have a restaurant queue? If you did, you also wouldn't have to eat at the big cafeteria anymore. Unfortunately, we don't. For matters like that, we still have to rely on his grace. We started a collaboration with the cafeteria a while back, though, so they let us borrow their kitchen to do some simple research into recipes and cooking. You've really thought of everything. Yeah, Paimon can definitely see how it'd be easier to live your life if you had all this support. Yep, and that's exactly why Mr. Duget founded the Society. We all think we made the correct choice to join him. Do you say anything, buddy? Actually? The society is planning to host another event soon. We haven't had many new recruits recently, so... Ah, the one you mentioned to me before. The idea is sound, but I still have some concerns about the specifics. Oh, they're like actually talking, talking. All right. Hey, you there, newbie. Hello? Okay, is he like the recruiter? I'm scared now. Uh, hello? Are you talking to Paimon? Yep, I'm talking to you. Now, why don't you follow my lead and take a deep breath before letting everything out like this? Ha! Ha! Sha! Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, that was, that was actually really loud. <laughs> That's how I pump myself up every day. A lot of my friends have found it super useful, too. With one shout, you can release all the fatigue, resentment, and unpleasantness from your lungs and return to the day with all the optimism in the world. Is he voiced by Caleb Bien by any chance? Because he sounds similar. Why don't you also give it a try, huh? I promise that it'll work. Ah, uh, gonna pass. Not the can I yell f instead. I mean, you can do what you want. <laughs> Feeling shy? That's all right. As long as you remember this trick, it'll come in handy one day. Just remember to take a deep breath and let it all out if you find yourself at your wit's end. All right, we've talked to everyone. 
Sorry, buddy. It sure sounds like they're all pretty happy. That would explain why Risley only had good things to say about this place. Huh. It looks like they're starting to wrap up their conversation as well. Let's go over to them. Of course, Your Grace. I will attend to those matters right away. Okay, then I don't have anything else to add. Oh, you're back. What did you think about this place? Eh, it's pretty chill. I have no comments. Now, note that your opinion will also affect my review of Dugier and the society as a whole. Ayo? Hey, oh, wait. I didn't know they were also a part of the evaluation process. Uh, it's all right with me, though. I'm pretty confident about our growth and activities. Pyra thinks it's pretty uh, good. Don't think anyone expected you to get a society going here of all places. Seems all right. On the surface. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, you're right. By themselves, our resources probably don't feel like much. The prisoners here all have very different personalities and psychological needs. Our needs are like violent beasts. If we can't face them properly, they'll grow restless and enraged, causing pain and conflict. But if we can placate them, they lose their fangs, and they can even be converted into fuel for far nobler pursuits. Which is why, in my opinion, learning to reconcile with oneself is the first step on the path to redemption. You've hit the nail on the head, Your Grace. Before I founded the society, I had met too many people who could not come to terms with themselves. And I'm sure that a part of your support is rooted in your desire to help those people find their way. And Paimon thought everyone was enjoying life just fine, working and fighting. I mean, some people don't like working or fighting, so improving yourself seems to be the best thing, you know? Honestly, prisons should be more rehabilitative. I honestly think this is, like, something that should be a part of the prison system itself. Like, it should be sanctioned by Rio. If the whole point of the prison system is to reform people... Uh, to eventually be put back into society, I feel like Rio should put more emphasis on this type of, like, thing, you know? Of course, that lifestyle is more than enough for some people in the fortress. For others, though, they would just be useless distractions. Speaking of fighting, I'm not sure if you knew this, but even His Grace sometimes fights in the ring. What? You fight in the ring too? Wearing those high-tech boxing gloves of yours? Oh, I almost never need them. Almost never, you say? <laughs> oh, he's back. <laughs> he's gonna run. Hey, isn't that the guy who lost his hat? Did you come here to relax too? <laughs> That's shady. I'm sorry. That's so shady. <gasps> What's wrong? Did you forget about us already? I don't like this. Are you feeling all right? You are looking a little pale. Mmm. No, I'm fine. Thank you for helping me get my hat back. Mmm, sir. I'm sorry, but I've got to go. I don't like that. He's still as weird as before. Mm, Paimon's kind of used to it by now, though. Are you? Dugier, do you know what's up with him? Hmm. I'm also not too sure about that, as far as I recall. He's always been a little strange, but I'll check up on him later. I don't like the I'll check up on him later. That sounds like the fact that everyone else gasped and he's just like, oh, everything's fine. I think Duji is sus. I don't trust it. After all, it's my responsibility as the leader to make sure that no one falls through the cracks. Oh, really? We'll leave him to you then. Hmm. Where were we before we got sidetracked? Something about useless distractions or boxing gloves. Hey, you want to fight? I'm pretty sure chat would love to go in the ring with you. Oh, right. About that. You might have thought that I was joking, but in a place like that, everyone will use everything in their power to win. And when emotions run high, things often spiral out of control. That would be when I need to pull out my gloves to maintain order. Sometimes you might need more than just gloves as well. This pair of handcuffs has also come in handy quite a number of times. I don't like that it panned to every single other character. That's interesting. Oops. Oh, isn't that that awful gem? You're still carrying it with you? Oh. Yeah, I kept it on me because of its uh, special qualities. It won't affect me as long as I don't let it come into contact with my skin. Go on, you guys. Pick up the item for his grace, would you? Y yes, right, right away. I wouldn't suggest that. 
That gym shines with quite the dazzling light. I hope it hasn't been damaged. Your Grace, please let me know if there's something wrong with it now. Hmm. It still looks good to me. Say, Dujie, have you ever seen a gem like this? Hmm. Never, Your Grace. Don't think I've ever been rich enough to afford this kind of a thing. Oh, really? Are you possibly the one who has been smuggling item? Hmm. <laughs> I guess that's fair. We've already gone over most of the things that I wanted to talk about, so let's wrap up for the day. The Traveler also has some other plans, after all. Mm-hmm. Uh... Got it, Your Grace. Take care, everyone. I'll take you to the exit. Exit where? It's a Traveler, circle. Paimon, it was an honor. I'm sure everyone would love it if you were to visit again. And that goes for you as well, Your Grace. We wish you all the best in your endeavors. Hmm. And same to you. Cheers to that. Hopefully you're not doing anything sus, mister. Otherwise, we gotta have a little bit of a talk. Uh, Pinot doesn't think we made any plans for the rest of the day. Why did you lie to him? Because we're going investigating, Paimon. Well... What's your opinion of the society now that you've taken a look around their headquarters? Uh, Paimon thinks it's pretty chill. Weren't you complimenting them the entire time as well? Undercover, buddy. Undercover. Paimon doesn't remember exactly what you said, but wasn't it something along the lines of encouraging people to embrace their new lives with optimism? There's only one potential problem. If the society does too good a job managing and rehabilitating its members, you may be soon out of a job. I don't think he'd ever be out of the job, let's be real. <laughs> that is certainly a possibility. But at this point in time, they're still reducing my workload by managing and rehabilitating prisoners in my stead. I wanted to see just how much they've managed to accomplish, and also get a sense of Dugier's plans for the future. I arranged for a meeting out of curiosity, but... Then I noticed some faint hints of dissonance. Dissonance? I'm sure the Traveler has sensed it too. Hmm. It's hard for it. It's a bit hard to put into words, but there's something off about that place. As expected, you also picked up on it. The whole truth is a bit complicated, so I'll explain everything to you later. I can tell you right now, though, that this was an unexpected turn of events. I had hoped to take care of it in secret, but now, uh... Confrontation may no longer be avoidable. It's hard to predict what might happen next. A confrontation, you say? I... Uh, you've completely lost Paimon. Just go with the flow, Paimon. It's fine. Why don't you take this opportunity to check back on the gathering place? Just tell them you left something of yours there by accident. If my hypothesis is correct, Dugier should already have left. And with his watchful eye removed, you may well get a very different reception from the members. To expect? I'm just following the most popular playbook in Fontaine. Investigate, obtain evidence, and then use the truth to render judgment. It's been so long since I got to watch a performance at Opera Epicles that I've even begun to miss it. Oh, you missing your boyfie a little bit, buddy? I'll take this as another one of your jokes. I'll explain everything to you later, but right now we need to seize this opportunity. Seize the day? Find out what you can from them now while they're all in one place. We might not get another chance like this anytime soon. All right. What do you guys say? Then what are you going to do? Good question. What should I do? Hmm. Maybe I'll drop by the ring and sign myself up for a fight. I guess chat's finally going to see Rio fight. Wait, so you're really just going to make us work while you slack off? Why is it always the cryo men, though? It's always the cryo men. Huh. It's just as Risley said. Seems like Dujier is no longer here. Who is surprised? You said you felt there was something off about this place, right? So let's see if we can feel something out. I love that he's just staring in the background, like... Paimon will do her best to help. Sure. Don't say anything. Uh, let's see if we can strike up a conversation. I don't like that he's watching me. Wait, you guys are... I'm, I'm what? 
We're really sorry. We just realized that we lost something. You're such and a bad we liar. We might have left it here by accident. Uh huh. We'll be on our way as soon as we find it. Oh, okay. Anyone see a glass bottle by any chance? Um. <sighs> Nobody? Hmm. About the size of my hand. I was using it to store some spice powder. <laughs> it's okay. There's no need to be nervous. We'll just look for it ourselves if none of you caught a glimpse of it. We're not going to tell Risley anything. Don't worry. I, I'll go find Mr. Dugier. No need. We're just looking for something. Why does he have to know? Uh, mm, feels like they're all terrified of something. We can look around for it, yeah? Uh... I don't like that. Talk to the members of the Beret Society again. Hey, hello? Anyone home? That's kind of rude vibe, I'm not gonna lie. Hello? How can I help you? Can you give us that rundown again? The Beret Society offers a variety of resources and benefits to its members, and, uh, I, I mean, you've already heard my spiel. I don't know anything beyond what I've already told you. Uh-huh. You don't know anything? Anything, you say? I, sorry, that's not what I meant. It's just, there's nothing more I can tell you. Hmm. Regis? Hey, big guy! Not her going, hey, big guy! W what do you want? Oh? Isn't this how you greeted us earlier? Take it deep- Oh, Oops. yeah, that's right. You, you sure are a fast learner. Uh, where'd your optimism go, buddy? Uh, I, I ate something earlier, so I'm falling into a bit of a food coma. And, um, I mean, not everyone can be super upbeat all the time, right? That is true. You can't be super upbeat all the time. You're looking for something, you said? I, I didn't see it, but, uh... I should be somewhere nearby. Uh-huh. Sure. If that's what you're saying. What about you, buddy? What you gotta say? Are you still organizing the bookshelves? Yeah, and... Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, but you can't check out the books right now. We weren't thinking about that to begin with, but weren't you super friendly just a moment ago? Sorry. Hmm. Well, okay, well, Raven well. Sees what you meant now. Hmm. Seems like they really don't want to talk to us, so let's just head back. Can I examine you the books? You really can't check them out. <laughs> Please understand. Oh, really? What's going to happen if I do? You really can't. Oh, you just say the same thing. Well, that's stinky. Fine. All right, I guess we're going back. Oh, you're back. How are things at their headquarters? Mm, sus. It was as if they had all turned into completely different people. They all clammed up and were acting super scared. Hmm. That would prove my suspicions. Uh-huh. The dissonance I mentioned earlier was precisely that fleeting moment of fear behind the cheerful facade. Like that one guy we found hiding in the box. Right. He was acting super scared, too, when we saw him at the gathering place. Hmm. Actually, hasn't he just been acting super paranoid since we first met? And that's precisely why I took his hat. Oh, so the one who started it all was... It was you all along! Are you surprised? It's because I wanted to figure out what's really going on. I don't believe any of Dugier's talk about unstable mental states. How long have you been investigating this? Not too long. Dugier made very elaborate preparations for my visit. But I don't know. It almost feels like the performance was too elaborate. Okay, but if you think something's wrong, why don't you just take the whole society into custody? Bro, they're already in jail. How are you supposed to take them into custody again? Aren't you the Duke? You can do whatever you want in this place. No, it, that's an abuse of power. That's... Paimon, we can't do that. There are things and laws and rules and things. <laughs> well, maybe you're actually a better fit for the position than I am. Just give me the word and I'll hand you the cuffs. She, he's being so sarcastic. I cannot believe. In all seriousness, however, cuffs and the like should be used sparingly. They're mostly for show. Everything I do is on display. 
The way people see me act determines the kind of world I can create down here. And I've always striven to appear fair and reasonable to the people. Uh, that sounds a bit deep. Paimon's not sure she got all of it. The Duke's actions will set the tone and the values will be emulated by the people. Yeah, you've hit the nail on the head. I have to lead by example if I want to maintain expectations of justice and order. And that's why even though Dugier had already let a few things slip, I didn't want to turn on him without irrefutable evidence. Alright, so you're saying Dugier has figured out some way to control the members of his society. And even though the members are acting all optimistic and motivated, it's all just a show. I feel like we're still missing something. Indeed. He certainly seems to be using some coercive methods to turn his members into the most upbeat and motivated group of people you've ever seen. And that won't turn out well in the long run. I have some faith, though, that some of the members understood the hint I gave during our visit. The line has been set, and it's quite likely that a fish will bite. Fish? Bite? Let's give them some time. My guards will need it to finish their investigation, too. You can find me in my office when the time comes. Oh, we're going to your office alone, you say? Hey! Don't just leave before you've explained everything to Paimon! Hey! It's finally evening. Risley's probably wrapped up his investigation. Paimon has no idea what that guy's thinking. Let's just go find him and ask him what he's really up to. You know, alone in his office. It's time to go by ourselves to the office at night. You know, in his private quarters or something. Oh, here you are. Did you manage to land a lucky pole on the welfare meals tonight? It was salad. Let's just get straight to the point. Has anything else happened with the society? Patience, Paimon. Even as the situation continues to brew, we still need to make sense of what we learned so far and go over any sticking points. I'm actually still thinking about the first thing that came to my mind when I noticed something amiss. Namely, why didn't anyone come to me about it? Because maybe they were prevented from coming to you about it? Oh, that's a good point. Could whatever they're afraid of be so powerful that even you won't be able to do anything about it? But even if such a thing existed, how could they be so sure without checking with me first? It'd be one thing if it was just one or two people, but it seems like everyone's convinced that I won't be able to help. Which leads me to believe that it's more likely that they think I just wouldn't care to help them. Because you instigated Dugier in the first place, or because you've been working with him all along? Yes, something like that. Dugier must have told them something to make them think I won't take their side. So it became imperative for me to refute that and prove my true stance. Of course, I had originally planned to do this in a more covert way, but I had to improvise when you identified the guy who'd lost his hat with everyone present. Ooh. There was no way to keep our investigation a secret after that. That makes sense. Uh, wait, then does that mean it was all Paimon's fault? Now that you mention it... The last thing that guy wanted was for Dugier to find out that he'd lost it. He would have never brought the matter up on his own. But now, not only has Dugier found out that he'd lost his hat, he's also realized that we were the ones who found it. That likely set his internal alarms off all at once. The hats must be hiding something. Yes, that's the conclusion I came to as well. It's the only thing that could explain the fear. They have drugs in their hats! If we didn't act right then and there, Dugier would probably come up with some other way to hide the truth and we'd be back to square one. So after giving the matter some thought, I tossed that black gem onto the ground. I must say, I was pretty satisfied with the results. Ah, so you did that on purpose? I mean, why else would he do that? It was, you know, kind of obvious? I'm not, I, I'm surprised that Paimon didn't realize that that was on purpose. Yes, that's right. Of course, that box was discovered as part of our investigation of the Society from the very beginning. I had no way to know if any of the members had actually seen the gem before, but since I had to do something, I decided to gamble. Ah, so you are a gamba addict, addict just like us. How surprising. So, that's the hint you were talking about earlier. Right. And I said back there that I had no idea what the gem represented. That should have been enough to let people know that it's still early days for my investigation. And since I was traveling with you, heroes who have never turned a blind eye to evil and injustice, 
they would also understand that we're here to help, rather than to tolerate or uphold the status quo. I'm surprised you still expect Paimon to have some brain cells. Listen, she surprised me before. She can do it again. You used us as a part of your plan, too! Yeah, obviously. So that's why you wanted us to come all along. My apologies. There was no time and quite a lot to explain, so I figured it might be easier to just let you see a few things for yourselves. But I can assure you that I've now told you everything there is to know. Are you sure? It's not the first time, buddy. Of course, you're under no obligation, but I would really appreciate it if you could continue to lend me your support and help me figure out the true secret behind the society. Uh, I guess so. Otherwise, chat will be very sad they don't get to see your lovely face. Would you be willing to lend me your support? What if I said no? Uh, but Paimon's still mad at you! <sighs> sure, if all you need is some help in planning, and also so that I can che keep chat happy so that they can keep barking at you. You have my thanks. Now, there are still two outstanding matters in our investigation. The first is the secret of the hats. I've examined one before. There was nothing suspicious about the item itself. The other is the true purpose of the Black Gem. We haven't been able to get anything out of anyone with actual knowledge of it. It's my hope that a brave fish will take my bait and venture outside of their dark and murky pool. I love that there have been so many shots of Ryo staring intensely at the camera. Like if this wasn't bait, I don't know what is. I'll put some music on while we wait. Music, you say? You're putting on some tune? Where'd you get the, the disc from, Nouvellet? You spend some time waiting in Rio's office. Your Grace, but may I come in? I'm afraid that someone's been following me. Oh, okay. Please, do. I don't think we've met her. I apologize for my lack of composure. These two are the guests that came with you to our gathering place, correct? You know us? Yes, my lover Fasol told me all about you. Your lover? Please, help us, Your Grace. He's in great danger right now. Slow down, take a deep breath, and start from the top. What happened at the Society? I'm sorry, Your Grace. I will try. I think I should start from when you saw Fasol last. You mean, when we saw him at the gathering place? Yes, he fled immediately, but many members are hot on his heels. Thankfully, he still managed to meet up with me and explain everything that had happened. Now that he's lost Dujier's trust, what awaits him is agonizing censure. What's... what? What do you mean? Censure? Censure is Dujier's method of establishing control, as well as the thing we all fear the most. Rather than listening to me explain what it is, Your Grace, please, just let me show it to you. Every secret may be found within... Oh? Uh, ah, here you are. I was wondering where you had run off to in such a hurry. Oh, Sir Dujier, how wonderful for you to show up. I'm gonna lock the door behind him. Please excuse us, Your Grace. It was never our intention to disturb you like this. You see, Avisa's mental state has been rather unstable ever since she arrived at the fortress. Ooh, you using mental disorders as an excuse for someone's ability to do something? I don't know. That seems a little ableist to me, Dujier. We don't tolerate that here. Hmm? She rambles often, has hallucinations. It may be best to dismiss her babbling as random gibberish. Also, we're being ableist in this house. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I thought you helped support everyone in this society that you run. But now I see. Now I see that you're just being a little twat. 
How dare you? I don't recall hearing a knock or giving permission for you to come in. Mm-hmm. Oh, my apologies. I merely did not wish for your grace to be alarmed. Had I not been so focused on recovering her, I would have followed all the rules of etiquette to the letter. So please forgive my discourtesy. Oh no, it's almost if the door locked itself and now we can't get out. It's time for inter interrogation. What's going on, buddy? <laughs> like we believe you. We know exactly what you're thinking. You've got some nerve showing your face in here. Please, there's no need to be upset. It's only natural to want to side with the poor sick girl, but I know his grace to be a reasonable man. Reasonable? Well then, what if the reasonable man wants to hear the lunatic out? That would be perfectly fine with me. Oh, and just so you know, we've also found the missing Mr. Fasal. I had no idea why he was so upset about losing his hat, really. Thankfully, he has already returned to his senses. We've brought him back to our place, so there's no need to worry. <sighs> I'm sorry, Your Grace. I don't have anything more to say. This is what you're afraid of, correct? You can tell me everything. I'll do all I can for you. I... I... I've never seen that thing in my life. You can do it of ease? <sighs> I don't like him smiling in the background. That is literally blackmail. Your Grace, I don't think there's anything else she would like to say. Pressuring her will not get you anywhere. Hmm. It's all right, Avis. As long as you tell me what it is that you're terrified of, no matter what it is, it will no longer be able to hurt you. I swear this on my name and honor as the Duke. So I would like, um, where's Sigevine with the uh, little tranquilizer gun? Uh, can we just shoot Dugier right now? Your Grace! Forget it. I'll keep my mouth shut. I've already said everything I could say about the matter. Oh, really? Say what you want to say, Dugier. I'm sorry, Your Grace, but I really don't have anything more to say. Please, don't press me further. But why? In that case, Avis and I will be off. Once again, please accept my apologies for disturbing your peaceful evening, Your Grace. Miss Avis, please show me your head. That is an order. Your head? You think it's on their head? Is it not on their hat? There's nothing there. It has to be through something else, right? Your Grace, I know you have long tired of my words, but please believe me when I say you've merely let your worries get to your head. Oh, really? Oh, you're trying to gaslight us, huh, now, huh? You were trying to gaslight us? That's crazy talk. That's actually crazy. The society has never caused trouble for you or any of the guards at the fortress. We've spent all of our time working hard and trying to lead better lives. Why are you doing everything in your power to prove our guilt? What's wrong with the current state of affairs? Oh, really? You wouldn't mind us investigating a little bit more now, do you? I'll do anything for you, as long as you give me the word. Why are you so intent on getting rid of someone who's been unfalteringly loyal? The fact that you're kind of bringing up the fact you're loyal is a little bit suspicious to me. Why bring that point on now? Your words bore me. Oh. <laughs> you know the consequences if I find you to be lying. Hmm. Oh. Okay. Thing that I do, I do for the Fortress of Meripede. Oh, really? But your grace is welcome to visit us any time to confirm the true intent of our activities. Which means he's going to be keeping a very, very low profile. All right, Avis. Let's head back. Okay. Mm she definitely had to have left something behind. There was a bow ah, that was on the table. That guy! He makes Paima really, really mad! We should have shown him his place! No, he physically can't because Rio does still have to play by the rules of the Meripede, you know? Sooner or later, all will pay the price for their arrogance. I love that quote. Oh, he must have been well prepared for this exact scenario, or he wouldn't have dared to be so openly hostile. All the more reason for us to be patient. Her bow is still on the table, though, so we can... 
We still have that. The entire society are his hostages. His subordinates would definitely react if he were taken into custody. And that's why he dared to bare his fangs right in front of me. One thing's for sure, we won't let him get away with this. The true secret of the society is neither on the hat nor on the members' heads. Dugier probably knew this from the very beginning, which is why he didn't panic. However, if we were to look at the rules, it would also seem like the head has to be the place where they're keeping all of their secrets. Yeah, none of this makes sense to Paimon either. What are they trying to hide? Oh no, I have to think? Alright. Uh, where did Avis hide the secret? Alright, let's hear Zack lines! The hats are definitely being used to hide a secret. But there's nothing wrong with the hats themselves. But if there's nothing on her head, why did Avis feel the need to remove her hat? From the way Dugier acted, he must have known from the beginning that we wouldn't be able to find any evidence. If we associate with this... Lost hair clip. There we go. I have an idea, but... What a coincidence. So do I. Huh? What is it? Tell Paimon about it! No, use your critical thinking skills, Paimon, buddy. Avis didn't take off her hat to draw attention to her head. She did so to remove her hair clip. Just saying, I if we hit him, we could have taken the punishment, but also get a visa away from Dushier. Okay, but that would not help solve the fact that the the guy is in the society's clutches. So chess piece wise, we would have still lost. You know. You mean this thing? So she handed a key piece of evidence over to us without Dugier noticing. I wonder if it has a, a, a voice recorder or like a note inside, you know? That would mean that Avis didn't stay silent out of fear. She stayed silent because she'd already given us what we needed. Avis is so big brain. Let me take a look. Riosley tinkers with the hair clip for a brief moment. I managed to remove this from the hair clip. It's long, slender, and conical, it's hollow on the inside, and looks something like a cross between a nail and a thorn. Ooh, a pin! But a pin for what? Uh, Paimon's last again. Let's see. What if we do this? Hey, what are you doing? Uh, wait. Some kind of dark liquid is leaking out of the gem! Ew, that's so gross. Oh. Oh, it's gooey. Guys, is this your goop? No licking goop. Guys, guys, is this how you guys are harvesting the goop? Stop it. No. Are you all in... Are you in cahoots? Are you in cahoots with Dogier? Are you all in cahoots with Dogier? Is this how you're getting your, your supply of goop, guys? Bad. Bad chat. How dare you be... How dare you work with Dogier? My own chat betraying me. How dare they? has been absorbed by this thorny looking thing. The gem is used as a container for the type of liquid. You've probably heard before that water is filled with the strongest emotions of humanity. With that in mind, this liquid is probably a highly concentrated solution of fear. Like liquid free fear, huh? Oh, so that's why even touching it will make you remember unpleasant things. So with this infused thorn... Dugier would be able to censure others. I can only imagine how it would feel to have this directly injected into your brain. Hmm, that mm, sounds unpleasant and honestly. The moment it hits you would be like being flooded with all the terrors you've ever experienced in your life. Agony, desolation, and an overwhelming sense of despair. No wonder they're all so terrified of it. So, was the hat meant to cover up their wounds? That might not even be all. Let's go get them right away. We can't let Dugier escape with all of the evidence. Yeah, he definitely knows by now, so we have to actually chase after all this. I don't like it. It's what he deserves. Go to the Beret Society's gathering place. <gasps> oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Your Grace, we have taken the Society members into custody. They all tried to flee just a little while ago, as if they had received some kind of order. We decided to forestall their plan, and were just about to send the word when you unexpectedly arrived. Great work, everyone. 
You had prepared for something like this all along? Dude's playing 3D chess where we're playing checkers, buddy. I had them stay here to keep an eye on things, so I'm glad that my intuition turned out to be correct. Perform a thorough search of the Society's headquarters and bring all the members to me. Understood, Your Grace. Now, let's check on them. As expected, they all have a hollow thorn inserted into a wound on their head. Ugh, that sounds awful. Paimon's glad her eyesight isn't so good that she can see it from here. I... Paimon's gonna float away for a bit. They didn't pull the thorn out? They probably left it there as a lasting reminder of Dugier's censure. These people must have had to endure an unimaginable amount of pain. Let's go check out the other areas, too. Okay. Oh, oh, we're taking a walk. Uh-huh. Oh, not me climbing on the table. Anyway, the boyfriends are together. These papers are actually outdated, but they look brand new. It seems like no one's ever flipped through them. If you look closely, even the creases are almost identical. They don't seem to have been formed naturally through reading. So hey, they've been faking this all along. Have a look at this. Look at what? What's going on, Paimon? This is a book that Paimon found in a box next to the bookshelf. Its contents are exactly the same as this book on the shelf. The colors of the covers are completely different, though, and the names of the authors also don't match up. So these were also just for show, to make it look like the bookshelves being added to and maintained. Yeah, and they dared to claim that they wrote these two. Hmm, interesting. It was all a lie. Everything here was all a lie. Look at what I found. Oh! Oh! Oh? This is... This is a surveillance port. With this, Dugier would be able to remotely monitor everything that's happening at the gathering place. So even if Dugier's not there in person, he'll still always have eyes on the members. That explains why they were all so terrified. Indeed. It's easy to become lost and confused when you're given no instructions or any kind of script to follow. And if any action you take may be deemed a mistake, and perhaps it's better to do less, or to not do anything at all. Dugier has already tamed them to his will. Your Grace! Your Grace! Uh-oh. What's the matter? We couldn't find any society members in the other areas. It also seems like none of the equipment in those rooms were ever used. All the signs of wear and tear are fake. The lime scale, the layers of dust, they were all deliberately added. How do you deliberately add <laughs> layers of dust? That sounds, well, first of all, gross. But second of all, I don't think that's physically possible unless you like, took someone's dead skin cells and kept shaving all of it off so that you can have layers of du that just sounds so gross we also investigated the members residences and weren't able to find anything their neighbors all say that they haven't returned home for ages oh is that right they're gone that could only mean the society put a lot of effort into building their front and the real headquarters are elsewhere indeed as long as he allowed society members to mingle with others, even with threats of censure, Dugier knew that he couldn't stop all of his members from speaking out. Meanwhile, this marvelous gathering place will lose all of its value as soon as a whistleblower sounds the alarm. So instead of being his real base, this is just an elaborate performance. The rest areas, the fancy equipment, even the members that we saw, they were merely part of the front. And only the most docile and well-trained members were selected as his performers. But then, where can we actually find him? <sighs> Let me think. Dugier must be holding all the rest of his members in another place. And if the overseer of my fortress guard has never alerted me to anything of the sort, he must be in Dugier's pocket. Let's go and find him. He can tell us where the real headquarters are. I'm of the same mind. Let's go. You two, follow me. Did that person flee here? That's the most likely scenario to me. He's probably already caught wind of Dugier's declaration of war against me. 
and has fled to seek his protection. Let's keep heading down. There are some abandoned areas in there. Since he needs space, I'd guess Duchier probably converted them into his headquarters. We should be on the right track. Now we just need to find that turncoat. Let's go. We can take this path. You guys take the other. Oh, we're by ourselves. Okay. Come on. Rio, where are you going? Oh, I don't get to switch to to Nouvellet? Fine. I guess we're then we're go to going on a, such a slow. Okay, we're running. I thought we were just walking. You know, I thought we were just chilling. Oh. You You good? All right. Bro, this is the slow. Okay, this is the this is the slowest walk I've ever experienced. I thought we were I thought we were on the chase for something, buddy. All right. Are are we good? Uh, okay. Sure. Look, there's a fallen guard over there. I might see some society members too. After them. It's rising. Run. Yeah, run. Mm -hmm. The f over here. If I talk to you, do you say anything? I can't even get the f over here. Come back. Got him. <sighs> did Dugier send you? Why did you attack that guard? <sighs> Come on, it's time to talk. Can't you see that he's trying to help? I will take your cooperation into consideration when it comes time to hand out sentences. But, but Mr. Dugier, he, he didn't want this guy to expose our true location. Oh. We were just about to dispose of him when you caught up to us. Dispose? Where are you going to dispose of him? In the jail? Like... So, in other words, your headquarters should be this way. <sighs> yes, it's just down this way. You'll make it there once you've seen it pass through a large drainage pipe. Now that's more like it. Guards, take them away. Let's go. It's about time that we find out what Dugier's really after. That's a real thing. Like, why use, you know, crystallized fear? I don't even know how you can crystallize fear. And, like... What are you going to do with all these people? And what exactly are you trying to smuggle in? Are you trying to have a revolt? Is there going to be a riot so that Dugier can be like the um, the Duke instead of Rio? Was there a revolution happening all along? Is this the plot of Les Miserables? Like what exactly is going on with this? Oh, oh, this is a little... Hmm. An escape? Enter! Dugier's kingdom... All right. There's so much space down here. Yeah, these are all former work areas. They've been left abandoned due to a lack of funds. There are usually guards on patrol here. It would seem that all of those guards have been bought as well. Stay sharp. He's got a ton of surprises waiting for us, I'm sure. On the way to beat up Duchier. Oh, Duchier. Where are you, buddy? Ooh, stuff. Money. I'll see your stuff. <laughs> Nougier, where are you going? Where are you hiding, buddy? It's time for mortar. Or at least more mortar than we possibly can. Hello. How's it going? Now. We have all Silence. the people that would have their own senses of justice, I suppose. Huh? Doink. Yeah. Oh, he just fully died. Oh, oh, I'm about to fully die. I'm glad they put a ladder here. I thought I was going to die. The ties beckon. An oversight on oh, my Oh, don't do that to Rio, please. Thank you. There we go. Easy peasy. Hey, are you okay? You're safe now. Just follow the guards and leave this place. Oh, okay, no voice I for him. that there'd be Gardamex here. Dugier really prepared for everything. And that would explain the strange decommission requests I received, as well as account for all the Gardamex that had mysteriously gone missing. Seems like he's prepared for an all-out confrontation with me. Hey, what's this? A book. Seems like some kind of handbook. Let me see. Ah... This should be the Society's real rules book. It lists all the rules that they're expected to follow. 
Members are not permitted to speak to each other or to leave without formal permission. Oh! Oof. Five members shall form a group, and the whole group will be punished for any single member's wrongdoings. Anyone who reports a fellow member's misbehavior shall be rewarded with food and water. I see. So it's much as I expected. So he's starving them. Ooh. I don't like that. That's really, really bad. But that's just cruel and unreasonable. To obtain food and water, prisoners are forced to snitch on others, and in the process cause pain to those around them. I mean, it sounds a little bit like the Red Scare. Which, if we're also dealing with yellow journalism in, like, the upper corners of Fontaine, I wouldn't be surprised if this is something that they based the story on. To avoid punishment, they learn to stop talking with one another. This leaves the wounds they've already received to fester, however. And so resentment builds until every prisoner has become an island. Finally, isolated and without hope, they accept their fate as Dugier's slaves. That's terrible. The whole thing is an affront to human dignity. Do you remember what happened to Paimon? She rejected all the snacks in the box once she was spooked by that black gem. She's usually all for tasty snacks, but she chose to go against her instincts after a negative experience. Ugh, is that the best example you could come up with? Anyway, Paimon still thinks she made the right decision. It never hurts to be careful. Mm-hmm. No, your decision was valid. However, it's also valid to interpret that as a decision that you only made under emotional duress. The human heart is like a raft in a vast and empty ocean. Mm -hmm. We convince ourselves that we're in control, but in truth, a single wave could sweep us off course and send us crashing into the path of a storm. Those who use fear to lead others astray must pay for that crime. Oh, he angry! He angry now! Messily written note. I vow to never run away again. I vow not to speak without permission. I vow to keep... Remain conscious while being censured. I vow to earnestly carry out any order given to me by Master Dugier. I vow to actively denounce any behavior of my fellow society members who undermine the society's unity. I vow to voluntarily accept a fourth degree or higher punishment should I violate any part of my oath. The entire text is handwritten. The paper is creased and the handwriting is sloppy, suggesting it was written in a state of extreme distress. It was signed at the end with a fingerprint rather than a signature. Judging from the mark, however, it certainly doesn't appear to have been made with a gentle pigment, like that of an ink pad. Like almost that it was made out of blood. I didn't add the last part, but you know, it could work. Anything here? Money. Money? Okay, that's not money. <laughs> Artifacts I'll take. <laughs> Uh-oh, it's purple. The area's purple. It's very factory looking. If I'm not mistaken, the space ahead should be the central area of this place. But the door has been locked. Rather than confront Dugier, I think it's more important right now for us to rescue as many society members as possible. You guys should wait here. We'll try to open the door and check out some other spots. Open the door. Would we have to do something to this mechanism here? Ugh, Paimon doesn't get it at all. Forget it, Paimon's just gonna do some trial and error. I don't know if that's the best idea if there's like a thing that shuts down everything. <laughs> Rotate the device to shine a light beam and activate the red devices on the wall in order to lock the butt the butt the ba 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 Oh. Rotate. What is that? Oh. Whoa, it's turning! Oh! Is it because we touched this thing? Look, the other side's open! Let's go! Well, that was easy. Um, can I walk through it? Oh. So it does not hurt me, nor... Am I a ghost? I can just pass right through light. That's crazy! <sighs> That's crazy! <sighs> Hello? Why can I not climb up? That's crazy. <sighs> Alright. Hello? Anyone home? There's money. Yoink. It's my money now. Oh, this was a terrible decision. That's a long way down. 
I almost died. Anyway. Any secrets? Any secrets to be found? <laughs> any secrets? Uh, Hello? Anyone here? Let's there are hill trolls here, which is yeah. shocking, honestly. Wait. <laughs> no murdering me. <laughs> I'll take free money. Yoink. Why are there hill trolls down here? Hello? Is anyone here for possible murder? <laughs> There's more hill trolls. Well, that's less fun. All right. Yoink. I waste to the wicked. First of all, that's rude. Second of all, how dare you? Third of all... Yoink. Silence. Huh? There's more. Hello? Why is there more? Raw stop. This could get a little chilly. A moment, please. Okay, he's got his health back, which is nice. Yoink. Is that enough? Okay. I'll take more money. Aw, oh, you don't drop anything, though. That's really annoying. I would like your stuff. Anyone here for some murder? Mr. Douge? Mr. Douge? You little twat. Are you here? This is a long pathway. I'm not gonna lie. I'm stuck. It's because I'm too tall. Hello? Dude, did you have to run all this way? Could you have at least backed yourself into a corner? God damn it. More puzzles. Okay, okay. Oh, it's so high. Uh, we're not gonna have to climb all the way up, are we? Sweetie, please. Activate the mechanism in front of us first, just like before. Hmm. Looks like there's a mechanism that's gotten stuck. It won't turn alongside the others. Uh, is there limiting something device. we can do? What's a limiting device? How do I install a limiting device? Oh, uninstall limiting device. Oh, cause so I can stop the rotation. So this is the right position. I just need to turn it a bit. So let's do that. Operate the limiting device and then turn it again. Ew. Okay, so I can stop it now so that you're in the right place and then rotate it one more time. There we go. Oh, there's water. Ooh, the water level's gone way up. So that's how we'll make it to the top. Uh-huh. Also, I love that I thought he was floating and that there wasn't any, like, um, ripples around him for a hot second. It is glitching quite a bit. Does this get you to the surface? Wait. What? Oh, it doesn't. Okay. Just air. <laughs> Hello? Anyone here? Don't run away now. Huh. Yoink. <clears throat> ah! Okay. Hello? <clears throat> Another puzzle. <clears throat> oh. Hello? These should be the prison cells. I don't like that. They look like bird cages. Hmm. Lots of empty cells in here. Dugier's probably moved them elsewhere already. It looks like bird cages. That's crazy. Let's still rescue the ones who got left behind, though. Every person counts. This looks like a torture dungeon kind of thing. Hello? Anyone home? Hey, it's all right now. You can leave this place. No. No, I won't try to leave anymore. I I'll never try to leave again. You're somewhere close to me. I, I don't want any trouble. No, we're not going to do that. Please calm down. We're not bad people. We won't be able to get through to her right now. Not with the stress response in the way. I'd also guess there are many others here who are more or less like her. Let's let the guards take care of them for now and keep pushing forward. Avisa and Fasol are still in danger. Oh, all right. Let's search for an exit first. We should find as many cells that we can unlock. Can we still talk to her? No. We're kind of just leaving her alone. Oh, view. What does it say? Oh. Tattered dialogue. I'm so hungry. Please give me something to eat. I'm begging you. Don't pass me a note. Are you trying to get us killed? 
Please, I'm hungry. So hungry. I'll report you if you keep this up. It's almost time for the inspection. Straighten up. So hungry. So hungry. So hungry. So hungry. What follows is constant repetition, with the handwriting becoming increasingly faint, failing to convey anything of use. The bottom half of the note is severely damaged, and has dirty shoe print on it. Looks like whoever wrote this has been taken away. I think this is the person who was saying, like, don't bother me. You let someone die in your grasp. You just watched someone die in front of you, huh? Okay, let's see. Both of them are locked, so this one has to... See if I can just turn. Then lock this, and then... There we go. The door's open. Huh. Maybe it's his grace. I'll go take a look. Who's that voice? I leave this area to you. Make sure to bring everyone out safe. Understood. And please take care as well, your grace. We'll return here right away and await your orders. Mm-hmm. Just focus on the tasks you've been given. I already have reliable help over here. Let's go back. We have unfinished business, do we not? We have one little dougier to find, that's for sure. That mechanism from the first room. Maybe we'll also need to hold it in place using the same device to open the door that leads to the central area. Though... What? Now? You just confused me. Don't forget to bring these along. Bro just said a whole lot of words that I don't understand. Okay. Can I talk to any of these? The guards from the Fortress of Meripede have already taken control of this area. You're safe now. <laughs> Poor thing. Okay, Rio said a bunch of stuff that I don't understand, so we'll figure it out. Okay. Okay, so there's a new device here. So we need to... do something. Operate. Make good use of the limited devices, transmit the light beams, and activate the receptor mechanisms on the ha. Huh? Do we have a lock? Install limiting device. This one should... Ah, that one should point that way. So I need to rotate this again. There we go. Proceed to the deepest area. I don't like that. I don't like that. This proceed to what deep area? <laughs> Hello? Mr. Dugier? We're coming for you, buddy. Uh-oh. I must confess to being furious. To think that there are still some of you who find it permissible to spit upon our rules. Uh-oh. I don't like whatever trap thingy that that person is in. That's... Mm. I'm ready for a fight. We all ready for a fight. We got this. Man knows... Will know my wrath exactly. Deep, you say, right? I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Remember their names. Fasal and Avis. They've betrayed you, betrayed us. And today you will see with your own eyes what'll happen to those who betray our cause. Go on, Avis. Pierce his skull with the thorn in your hands, and then push in the Aqua Dolores. They're called Aqua Dolores? Interesting. Also, she can't, because guess what? We have the thorn. Of course. You will do it one drop at a time. Let it do its magic again and again, and don't stop until you've pushed all of it in. Thistle, I'm sorry. It, it's okay. I'll find a way to endure. Oh, shut your wretched mouths! When did I give you permission to speak? When did I give you permission to do this to other people? My rules are the paramount law of this place. Only more pain will come to those who dare to disobey. Oh, really? That's enough, Dugier. Your rabid screams have been beyond nauseating. <laughs> Is that his grace? Oh, Risley. I knew you would come. 
But I didn't expect you to be so quick. Oh, really? Must you still refuse to let me be? Did I not spell everything out for you already? What's so blasphemous about sharing a slice of the cake with me when you've already got the entire fortress at your feet? Listen, the only cake here is Riosli's. You're not going to get anything. It would seem that you can't see the difference between sharing and looting. And on top of that, look at your people. Are they not starving as you wolf down your cake? Rio, please don't say that because chat's gonna go rabid. You stop acting all high and mighty like some hero of justice! Have you forgotten? Nobody in this blessed fortress is innocent! We are all irredeemable monsters who have destroyed something that others held dear. What's so wrong about punishing those who deserve to be punished? It's what they've always deserved. Is it? And please, are you really gonna tell me that you care about their lives and well-being when you just need a supply of labor to keep this place running? Is it that all you need to keep your cushy life? To be fair, that is a very valid point of Duchier, but that doesn't excuse the things that he's done, you know? Sadly, you're wrong on both counts. Unlike you, I've never seen them as currency. The fortress is not only a place for confinement, but also a place for rebirth. Just as people are free to give in to the darkness within their hearts, they are also free to seek redemption and a new beginning. Our bodies have limits, but our spirits will always remain free. They may have made mistakes, but they are still human beings with people and things that they cherish. That is true. You can't just view, like, prisoners as people who are not people. They're, in fact, people who just had to make bad choices, either forced or willingly. And most importantly, they should always retain the freedom to choose their own path once they've reflected on their past misdeeds. But you... You're destroying their spirits with fear, taking their freedom away so that they'll become slaves who will never again feel or think. And you say that's what they've always deserved? You are nothing compared to them. He... he's really mad. I mean, I'm just as mad because you... It's really ironic, or at least coincidental, that they gave Dujier a southern voice. They also refer to him as master. If you don't see the parallels, look into U.S. history. Honestly, he's been keeping it in until now. You think me arrogant, Risley. Well, I think you're too young and naive. You understand nothing of this world. Nobody actually sees this fortress as any kind of just a wonderful place. See it for what it is. A dumping ground of pain and misery, irredeemable now and irredeemable forever! No prisoner will listen to you out of gratitude of their hearts. The whip is the only way to make them obey. Had you been just one step slower, I would have already taken control of all the garden mechs in this place. Your vision gives you strength. But how long will it hold against these powerful constructs? <laughs> you talk big, but in the end, you know nothing outside of power and control. In that case, let me give you a small taste of what real power looks like. Oh, we're fighting. Okay. Bow your justice. No. Please stop stabbing Nubal in the back. <laughs> Please, we can do this. Humbled. Nothing can beat the spin to win method oh. out. <laughs> Flames purge. Oh. Ow, can you stop slapping Justice him? Oh blind, my psychic. god. Okay, fine. I'll use Stay Rio. Cool face your guilt. There we go. At least one of them's frozen. Yeah. Ow, could Let's you begin. not please? Preferably. Please, my guy. You can you can do it, buddy. I'll protect you. You got this. It's okay. You got um the the other two people who have any sense of justice in this game. Be I suppose. Sanctified. Or at least two of them. A moment, please. How many fights are here though? That's my only question. Please, could you not do that? 
There we go. Oh? Ooh. Western standoff. If you think fear can control everything, well then, terrify me. Don't high road me. You're just another crook. And it's time you got Oh, he got a gun. Blood. Bro, he <laughs> missed. Bro, such an awful shot. Get flipped, bro. What are you gonna do to me? Come on. Oh my god! What's the matter? Too scared to shoot straight? I, I warned you! Unauthorized punishment and torture are prohibited here! As the Duke, you should set an example! Funny how that slipped my mind. Oh my god! Well, from this point on, you can forget about that rule. The rules of the fortress are there to keep the likes of you in check. But if the Duke wants somebody dead, he needs no justification. Understood. The guards rescue the society members who have been imprisoned at the true headquarters. Riosley spends much time with each member, comforting them and extending his personal apologies. Following that, he makes arrangements for follow-up medical care and cleanup work. And thus does the Beret Society debacle truly come to an end. Sorry for taking so long. Did I keep you waiting? Hmm. Not that long. The amount of whooping in chat is crazy! Damn, y'all really like that cutscene, huh? Here's my thing, though. I know he did the whole, like, if I, if the Duke wants someone dead, then he, um, he'll have them dead threat. is mostly as a threat, right? But also at the same time, it should be your responsibility as a duke that you shouldn't abuse your own power. That's the only thing that rubbed me the wrong way with this entire thing. It's just like, hmm. Interesting that you would say that, sir. I know he probably wouldn't abuse his power like that. And he'd rather he's the type of character to like not want to deal with any extra work. But I don't know. That threat kind of that threat kind of rubbed me the wrong way. It was more like. It gave me a little bit of propaganda, but like, other than that, sick cutscene. I think he said that because it means of how far you pushed him. I think that's the case too, but I don't like the fact that it was like, oh, if I want you dead, I want you dead, you know? The writing of that's kind of just like, ooh, that sounds a little bit um, justifying, I suppose, the idea that, hey, I can do whatever I want because I'm in a high position of power. It gave- it just rubbed me the wrong way. That's all the- that's all I'm saying. No, not at all. Paimon didn't know you were so considerate. <laughs> if you ask me, I'd say I actually feel very helpless. There's no way that I could truly empathize with the fear that the members felt every day. That's true. But he deserved it. He deserves the worst punishment that he can possibly get. But I don't think Ryo abusing his powers would have brought justification to the things that he has done, you know? It's kind of the sense of like, what do you... It's the question that's been asked throughout Fontaine. What do you determine is justice, right? Every person in Fontaine has had their own version of justice. And some of them I do agree with and some of them I don't. So it's kind of just like, some versions of justice is like, you know, eye for an eye. Some versions of justice is to put them away in jail forever. Um, So, it would depend on how you view justice, I think. I wonder if part of the point is that Rio's still holding firm. Like, he could so easily do what Dugier did and abuse his power that he had it, but chooses to maintain the order the he ups held thus far. I think so. I think that's the case. Because even though he could possibly have killed him, I think it's good that he didn't. Just because it would have set a wrong example in the Fortress of Melop uh, Meripede. The sort of, you don't want me to play your game because I would win? Kind of. I think it was more like an empty threat, if that makes any sense. Um, 
it still rubs me the wrong way just because he's a very high member of the Fortress of Meripede. He's part of the privatized industrial complex, and he is the highest power in that complex. So for him to say that is kind of just like, mm, that's a little not fun for you to say, you know? It's kind of just like, you could possibly abuse your power, and I don't like the fact that you know that you could possibly abuse your power, but I'm glad that he's not, if that makes any sense. Because I think Ryo's version of justice is very much like everyone should be able to essentially reform from the past misdeeds that they have. And I think it's very interesting as someone who was possibly a criminal, you know, that he came from the same place um, and who is now in a very high position. And I'm actually glad that he's not abusing his power in any way. I could comfort and compensate them all I want, but it might still not be enough to repair the damage that has been done. For all the psychological damage? Probably not. I have to take responsibility for it, as does the fortress. At least we were able to stop it before it got any worse. Maybe you should give a more formal apology. Yeah, it's the least that we could do. So, do you have a plan for how you're going to deal with him yet? Oh, do you? I've already got an idea. Oh? For now, I think I'll do nothing. Huh? Why? I think it's a very fitting punishment for him to have to imagine the sorts of punishments that will soon be coming his way. See, Ryo plays mind games, and I actually appreciate that. It's very clever of him for him not to do nothing. He'll be left in the dark with regards to both the dates and the details of his punishment. Of course, that's not to say that I'll be letting him off scot-free. It's not often that I actually get the chance to be creative with my punishments. I'm going to talk to the members of the society. He'll get a chance to experience everything that he's ever inflicted on them. Hmm, interesting. So it's very much... I don't think it's exactly eye for an eye, but I'm glad that he's including the members of the society, the people who were victimized from... Uh, by this guy as a part of in the decision in the decision making process you know might be a personal interpretation but i would find that the only time he's ever gotten close to abusing his powers uh, like that was because the idea of el someone else doing that pissed him off so much maybe and maybe that's what they were trying to go Check for Paimon didn't know you could also be so harsh looks like she should watch her tongue when she's around you in the future why do you think i'd do that kind of thing to you you offend me, Paimon. Not that you offend me, Paimon, but you never know. You never know. Anyway, jokes aside, thank you so much for all of your help. There's still a lot for me to take care of, so... How about this? I'll treat you to a meal in two days at the coupon cafeteria. We should have a better handle on things by then. Uh, no, Paimon's had enough of that place. Why did he talk like Kaya there? I mean, he's cryo. He's a little sassy, and he's also in a high position of power. I wouldn't be surprised. Don't worry, it won't be the same old welfare meal. I'll make the necessary arrangements. Oh, then you've got yourself a deal. Two days time, you say? Oh, he's gone. Okay. 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock. See, this is reasonable. These are reasonable times. It's not like 6 o'clock in the morning like some people. Ah. You're here. Paimon never forgets about meals. Even if the traveler forgets, Paimon will remind him for sure. You say as that if, as if I've been feeding you or something. Uh, that's not what Paimon meant at all. Risley, you got what Paimon meant, right? Hmm? I'm a little confused, actually. Hey, not you too! Jokes aside, I've got some good news. After taking a look, the doctors have let me know that it shouldn't be too difficult to extract the thorns. Which means that everyone should be able to recover after a period of rest. But what are they made of? And is this does this have long-term effects, honestly? As for their mental recoveries, most are making good progress as well. We've added a few who were more severely affected to a special observation list. You sure got everything taken care of, Risley. I try my best. After all, it's my duty to take care of everything that happens within my territory. Interesting that you call it your territory, Cerberus. I have a question for you, actually. Please, go ahead. Your flashbacks when you pick them up the gem. Your anger when you confronted Dujier. Ah, that's a bit of a long story. I once had a similar experience. 
It had to do with the host family I lived with as a child. A host family? Were you orphaned? I was an orphan. Yes. Adopted by a couple with a great deal of love in their hearts. I had many siblings, and we all adored each other. Once we were older, Mom and Dad would turn us over to be individually adopted by families of greater means and go on to adopt more young children. That's kind of sweet, but also like, I don't know, it's a little sad at the same time. They were perfect parents. Or so I thought. Oh. And then? And then I found out we were merely raised as livestock. Once we had reached a certain age, our parents would bring us to the market for sale. Ooh. All children that were sold would leave the house and nobody would know what became of them. As for those who didn't sell, they were merely disposed of. Did you know I once considered myself an extremely lucky child? And all of my friends, all of my siblings, they all felt this way as well. I was also not the first to find out about the truth. All those who found out before me were simply added to the disposal pile. I could never shake the feeling of irony every time I juxtaposed their tragic ends against our parents' adoring smiles. That explains a lot. In fact, you have trauma. Human trafficking makes its appearance once again. Yeah, this is literally child trafficking all over again. What's with... What's with Fontaine and the amount of child trafficking that's in this area? That's really, really terrifying, actually. Yes. Like the society, my parents created a facade of joy, lied to satiate their desires, and even employed incredibly cruel methods to keep their grasp on power. They did all of that, but never considered how their actions would utterly ruin all the children they took under their wing. Worse, perhaps they never cared about that at all. But I did. So in the end, I killed them and set all of the remaining children free. I was convicted for my crimes and exiled to the fortress of Meripede. Ah. My methods were extreme, yes. But I was still a teenager at the time. I'd been betrayed by those I trusted most. And I didn't think that more moderate ways would solve the problem. My doubt and helpless anger pushed me forward until I got what I deserved. Hmm. Not sure what to say. It's all right. You don't have to tell me what you think. I've already committed to this path, regardless of what anyone may say about it. The least I can do is to make sure that the same tragedy will not happen again in my new home. Sorry to disturb you, everyone. Oh, Avis is back. Okay, before we move on to the next part of the story, I see what you mean about, like, Rio having some reason as to why he reacted that way. What he wanted to do was an eye for an eye. Remember N Nuvalet's uh, files on his trial? Basically, it was morals versus the law. Yeah, it's very... What he did in his past is very eye for an eye. What justice is to, hi to him as a teenager was um, essentially um, because they hurt everyone else, they deserve death. But I'm kind of glad to see Rio's, like, processing of his trauma and seeing that although... He still holds anger for the things that Du Jie did to these people, especially because he's personally experienced something very similar before. He's chosen not to, you know, do the same thing over again and not repeat his mistakes and not kill him. It's very interesting how he plays his character. I actually appreciate that he's not just a straightforward hero character and he's played as an anti-hero, if anything. It's refreshing to say the least <laughs> it's not everyone's you know a perfect character like nouvellette who can you know seems to know everything and does everything correctly rio is the type of character who has made mistakes and made grave ones in fact and is now choosing to hey actually not murder people we already have enough paragons of justice exactly i like have i like that he's a morally great character i appreciate that Oh, it's a decent facile. Are you two feeling better yet? It was all because you arrived in time. I managed to escape unscathed. Glad to hear it. We came here on impulse today because we were hoping that you'd be able to lend us a hand, Your Grace. Please, go on right ahead. I'll do my best to help. 
Within reason, of course. It's... <clears throat> I'd like to be wedded to Avis here at the fortress. Oh, they want to get married? Trauma really does bond people together. You're getting married? Yeah, we met each other through the society and both fell into Dugier's trap. But even during our time there, we never doubted each other. We always believed that Dugier was manipulating us, trying to make us mistrust each other. And after this incident, we've come to believe that we've found the one for the rest of our lives. That's so cute. <laughs> you could say we managed to make the best out of a bad situation. He didn't abandon me, and I didn't forsake him either. But we're still both prisoners. And we also aren't sure if the fortress is the best place to host something so celebratory. So we are just wondering, is our request a bit too out of line? Hmm. You're right in that the fortress has never hosted a wedding before. But that's no reason to say no, is it? I'll help you make the arrangements. If you need anything special shipped in from the surface, just say the word. I like that he's the type of person to be like, yeah, why not? Let's do it, you know? He's I like the fact that Rio embodies a character where like you can make mistakes, but you can still change um what your actions are in the future, you know? Oh, we can't thank you enough, your grace. We are actually also planning to stay here after the conclusion of our sentences. Oh. Yeah. We've already made tons of special memories here. So now, it'd be too hard to leave. And we have full confidence in the fortress's future with you at the helm, your grace. Your trust is the highest form of praise. Hey, loosen up a bit. Shouldn't you be the happiest man in Tevac to hear that people would like to stay of their own free will? It'd be more paperwork for him, though. Yeah. I'll always take a genuine expression of faith over any obligation to obey. Ooh, I really like that last not line. I really like that last line. I'll take any form of obligation of faith than the obligation to stay. That's really interesting for you to say, sir. Hmm. I like this story. I like that it's not, like, very straightforward in the sense of his character specifically, you know?